Okay, now we are ready to go. Okay, now you should see the Gemara. Yeah. So we were learning the halachas of Naira Hamurasa. And the halacha is, there's two parashis in the Torah. There's one parash in the Torah, if a Naira Hamurasa is Mizana, and Adam come and say, Adis, on this woman who was a Naira, who was Mizana, she gets Skila. And where does she get Skila? She gets Skila at the Pesach Ha'ir, at the, I guess, the, the, the city square. However, if it's a more complicated case, so you have a Naira Hamurasa who was in some, but she wasn't caught. And then her husband made Nisun on her. And after he made Nisun on her, he discovered he discovered that, in fact, she was novellus. And he discovered that she was Mazan. So then the Allah is, if there are Adam that, in fact, prove that she was Mazana, she will get Skila. But if he has defamed her and the Adam are proven to be Adam Zoyman, then, of course, she doesn't get killed. She's innocent. Rather, her husband, he gets Malchus. A and B is he has to pay a knas to her father of a hundred of a hundred shkolim. So that's that is the sugya that we we're going to be analyzing today. <coughs> and what if she he says he says pesach mitzvah mitzasi? Well, if he says pesach mitzvah mitzasi, all that does is it creates a buzz and it's sort of a call for Adam to come and and say testimony. So what that'll do is it'll create a tumult, and if there are Adam that find any issue, then they could prosecute her. But if not, there's nothing that she could do. Now, he, he is, and she he, says, she says, she says that the Hatma say it. Oh, so in such a case, we had a machlokes. We had Rabbi Gamliel said she's believed, and Rabbi Shua said she's not believed. But she for sure doesn't get punished for anything because there's no Adam. She doesn't get punished even if there's no, even if he doesn't say Pesach Mitzvah. As long as there's no Adam, there's nothing. Uh, exactly. A container for half is modern. Well, no, because he's believed, he's believed to be Mafsid her Hurksuba. Because there's a sheet that holds. Without yes, Adam. There's, there's a sheet that holds that there's a Chazaka, Ein Adam Tereach Basuda. If he was lying and he was making it up, he wouldn't have paid for a whole wedding to mess it up right away. Clearly, he must have really found Pesach Pesuach. So we actually believe him on that, according to the multitude. So let's see what, what Sheila says. So we're the third line from the bottom on that Mem Dalarim base. Tony Sheila. Sheila is quoting a Bryce. It's important to note that we know that the only Bryce's that are rock solid, you could rely upon them, are brises that were reviewed by Reb Chia and Reb Oishia. This brisa, as we're soon going to see as the sugi unfolds, was not reviewed by Reb Chia and Reb Oishia. And therefore, the Gemara is going to challenge this brisa from other known brises, and the Gemara is going to actually slug up this brisa and change and change the Gersa. Because the Gemara is going to prove this brisa wrong. And Toysus is going to ask, how could you ask a kasha from one brisa on another brisa? Maybe there's a machlekes. And Toysus is going to say that not all brises were created equal. This brisa was not reviewed by a pchina brisa, and therefore it is subject to challenge. So Tanya Shiva, shalos midos benayim. There's three variables. There's three different things that can occur that will have a different result. First, let's discuss the textbook case that the Torah is speaking about when it discusses the shaila. Of that is the case discussed in the parsha in Kiseitse. She was already Nesua. She was already Nesua. And Aiden came when she was Nesua to tell us about an aver that she did before she became Nesua while she was still in Arusa. And the Aiden told us that she was Mazana as an Ashish Ish while she was in Arusa. The Allah for such a woman is. Cycling, so now I'm going to turn the daf onto daf mem hey amr aleph.
Soiklin Oisa, she gets Skila, Al Pesach Be Savia, in front of her father's house, Kloimar, as if to say, Ru Gidulim Shigidaltim. Look at what type of child this home raised. That is the textbook case of Naima Rosh Zinsa. The Torah tells us of her husband claims that she was Mazana and it's proven Adam, he gets skila and she gets skila al Does it have to be? Does there have to be a surah? Yes, there would have to be a surah for her to have gotten skila. There would have had to be a surah. So these Adam will come after she is in the surah had to have said that there was a surah. Now, what if these Adam would have been proven wrong? What if they were Nizam? Two Adam said, how could you say that she was Mizane on Monday morning in Toronto? You were with us on Monday morning in New York. So if she's proven wrong, so then the husband gets two punishments. A, he gets Malchus. B, he has to pay the father of the girl a hundred gold. Now, what happened is Bolo Adim Beve Savia, Shazinta Beve Savia. What if Adim came while she was still in Arusa? While she was still in Arusa, Adim came and said that she was Mazana. So the only difference between this case and the case in the Torah of Naram Rasa is here, her husband was not involved yet. Even before her husband got involved, he was only in Arusa, still in her father's household. Adam came and said she was Dinsa. So she gets Skila, but not Al Pesach Beisavia, because a woman who is a Naya Murasa, that's Mazana, without anything to do with the husband, the Torah says there, she wears her Skila, her Al Pesach Shara ear, by the door, door, by the gate of the city. And now the third case is going to be the case that's going to cause all of the controversy. Sarcha, she was a Naya Murasa, and she was Mazana Takas which would make her Bichai of Skila. But by the time they got to Besdin, by the time Adam came, now the Adam came before she, before her Nesuit, but nevertheless, by the time Adam came, she already hit 12 and a half, and she became a Bulgaris. Now the Allah is, if a Bulgaris is Mizana, even if she's in Arusa, she gets Chenek, she does not get Skila. But here you have a woman who is a Naira, who is Mizana, which really should trigger a of Skila. But since she wasn't convicted, until she became a boigris, Tidoin Bechen. She's only going to have the Misa Chen. Lememra, this tells us a massive tradition, which the Gemara is going to challenge and eventually reverse. The Chalhecha de Ishtini Gufa Ishtini Since her body changed and she became a boigris, and now which, if she would be Mezana, she would only be Chayev Chenek. Therefore, since we're making judgment on her now, we give her the Misa that she would get if she would have done the Avera now. It's a massive Chiddush. When she did Avera, she did Avera that was Bechai Rishkila. But since we're judging her now, and now if she did Avera, she would only be Chai of Chenek, we'll only give her Chenek. A massive Chiddush. This is a massive Chiddush. Okay, now the problem, the first problem that we have to look at is Hasra Sokhi. We know there's a rule, that, like, like Rivera mentioned earlier, that unless there's a hasra, there would not be the punishment. So what were they master? If they were master her, you better not do this, or else you'd be high of skila. But now, how can you give her chenek? It's an, it's, it's an incorrect hasra. So there's one of two approaches that we can answer. We learned a couple of blood ago that if you give someone hasra for misa, you can give them malchus based on that hasra. Because Asra for a severe penalty will also be a good Asra for a lesser penalty. And that's logical because it's a massive Asra. And so she did it, she did it thinking that she'll be high of skila, for sure we can give her Malchus for it. Or in this case, she did it thinking she'll be high of skila, we can for sure give her Khanik for it. That's one shot. The other shot you can learn is there are sheep as a whole that Asra suffered is a good Asra. You don't even have to give a clear Asra. So that's, that would explain why we can give her chenek. But the chiddush that we have to highlight here is that since her body changed and now, her oinish would be different if she did the aver today, the psak today won't give her any worse than that. Frank and 
I'm going to show you a brisa that, in fact, proves this wrong. Now, until now, we were discussing a woman who never became a Nasua. So this has nothing to do with the parasha of Moshe Shemra. Now we're going to introduce the parasha of Moshe Shemra, meaning she wasn't discovered to have been Mizana until she was already a Nasua. Naira Hamurasa Shazinsa, a Naira Hamurasa became, did a Navera as a Naira. And then there was a Nasuan, her husband took her in, and then she matured, the Misha Barbara, and then she became over 12 and a half. She became fully matured. And then, and then the husband said that she was Mizana after her heiress. So if it turns out that he's lying, Normally, normally, if it turns out that he's lying, he has to get Malchus and he has to pay a Knas. But in this case, since this occurred when she was a Bagaris, since Aitiel and Shemra occurred when she was a Bagaris, which is not covered by the rules of Moji Shemra, who ain't like the ain't a This is not in the parsha of Moji Shemra. But he, Vizoy Mimel, she gets killed, and the Adam who were who falsely accused her of his look get killed as well. He was I remember Makdim in the base of Skila. First thing in the morning, we get him right into the base of Skila. So right off the bat, the Gemara asks, He was I remember It's impossible for her to be Chayiv Misa if there's Adam Zayim being Chayiv Misa, because by definition, if there's Adam Zayim, then she's not guilty. So how could you say they both are Chayiv Misa? Ella, what the Bryson, of course, means to say is, oy he, oy zay, mimel, maktim, lebe, So there's a couple of things we need to know from here. The most important focus that we have is she's getting skila. Meaning, she did not very well, she was a Naira. That gives her skila. But she wasn't convicted until she was a Boigris. Yet we're still giving her skila. Sheila and Bryce has said that if she wasn't convicted until she became a Boigris, she'll get Kenna. So you have a right from here that just because her situation changed and she became a bikeress, that won't change her Misa. She should still be liable to the Misa of Skiva, as you see in this price. So that is the Kasha that we have on the Brysa that Sheila quoted. Now, as an aside, we have some other difficulties that we're going to have to clear up, but the Gemara will clear up. And that is, is she in the Parsha of Moiti Shema or not? The rules of Moji Shema are the husband accused, after the Nisuan, the husband accuses her of having been Mizana while she was in Arusa. She gets Skila if he's right. And if she's right, he pays the Knas and he gets Malchus. Here, it's a split. If he's right, she's going to get Skila. But if she's right, he doesn't pay Malchus, doesn't get Malchus. He doesn't pay. So the question is did this woman fall under the rules of a Moji Shema or not? It seems like it's half and half. Whatever her, wherever her liabilities are, she gets Kilo. And we say she does have the halacha of a Nairamurata. And the fact that she became a boigress before conviction has no impact on her psaac. Yet, when he violates and he made it up, he walks scot free. And we don't consider her in the parsha of Moichi So that's something that the Gemara is going to have to deal with later. But for now, What's the most important thing to know from here is that even though when she did that verse, she should have been Chayef Skila, since she wasn't convicted until she became a boigris, she's still Chayef Skila, which is a direct contradiction to what Sheila said, where if she's convicted after she becomes a boigris, she's only Chayef then. Yes, so what am I missing here? If she was a bear, if we're talking about an adult, right? All the way adult. He, she, the Bacher is... Um, 18 and she's 17. It doesn't change. Uh, then they, she gets the same thing. It's not considered Moitzi Shemra. No, there's no, the, the, I mean, it's, it's technically it's Moitzi Shemra. He made up a lie about it, but it, it doesn't fit into the halacha, the very specific halacha that the Torah tells you about Moitzi Shemra. That does not cover once she's not a Naira anymore, that special parsha of the Skila. And the Knas and the Malchus does not apply. And then she just would get either, it would be just proven in a court of law, and then it was, she would get so, regular. So let's, let's actually talk about a case. Uh, an 18 year old girl marries a 21 year old Bachar, and he claims 
that she it was Mazana. Now, now this is not relevant because the Kedushan and the Erisin, the Nisun and the Kedushan are one back to back. But imagine if the Kedushan. Yeah, would be yeah, a I, before, right? right. We're talking about. So, it and he would say day. he would say she was he would accuse her of being Mazana while the, between the Kedushan and the Nisun, yes. and he would bring Adim that would testify to that fact. She would be Mechayev Chenek. And if Adim becomes Zoyimim, if the Adim becomes Zoyimim, he is popular from any type of knas. Now, whether or not he's Chayiv Malchus, we'll see later on today. There are those who hold he would be Chayiv Malchus because of the Isser of Loiseleich Rochel Ba'mech. But right. it definitely, but that's a general Isser that has nothing to do with the specific parsha of Moshe Okay. Okay, so let's see what the Gemara says. So, Amarova, you cannot ask me a question from Moji Shemra, because Moji Shemra is a chidush and has its own set of rules. Amarova, Moji Shemra, Karmat, you're asking me for Moji Shemra, where she gets skila? That's not a raya. Shiny Moji Shemra, the chidush. Moji Shemra is a very big chidush. It doesn't follow the regular rules of logic. And therefore, it makes sense to say that there'd be a chidush skila for this girl even though she is now a bikers. Why, where do you see that Moji Shemer is so radically different from everything else? What if you have a Naira who was taken into the Chupa, so she had a Nesuin, but they still didn't have a Bia. So she's a Naira, and she's a Besula, but she's not a Nerusa now, now she's a Nesua. Vizinsa, and she did Znos, Bechenek, she would be Chai of Chenek. However, the ilu moiti shemra b'skila. If the man, if the husband says you were mezana a minute ago before the nesuin, she'll be chay of skila. Yet just because the nesuin happened, all of a sudden she's chay of chenek. That's a very, very unusual thing. And therefore, since it's an unusual thing, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not a kasha. Why if we only paskened on her later on when she was a boigris that she would still be chayef skila because the whole idea of the parsha of Moiti Shemra is unusual and therefore that's not a catch. Zok to Gemara, what are you talking about? Amalei Ravuna Breda Vishua Larava Dilma Kicha Dis Rachmana. Where is where are we saying? In what respect are we saying that Moiti Shemra is so unusual? And therefore, you cannot bring a raya from Moshe Shemiro. That's heichet la'ish to gufa. If she was a Narusa and she became a Nesua, nothing in her body changed. There was a halachic difference. There, in fact, there, in fact, we'll say that she gets skila, even though there was a status change in her. She did the Aver when she was a Narusa. And now she's a Nesua. There, we'll say, she'll get skila. Because because it's not such a great change. But that wouldn't be a reason to say that if she became a boigris where her body changed, you wouldn't be able to use the fact that Moiti Shemer is so radically different from anything else that because of that, if it was a Shtani Gufa, there should be a change. Because the, the, the uniqueness that we're displaying that exists in Moiti Shemra is only in a case where there was a Shinui in status, but not a Shinui Aguf. And therefore, therefore, you cannot explain away the Brisa that says, that she gets Skila, you can't explain it away that it's just one of the abnormalities of the Pasha of Moji Shema. And therefore, it's going to be Shver, because here it says she gets Skila because the Aver was done when she's Chayiv Skila. So how could the Brais of Shila say that she only gets Chen? And that's where we're holding now at this country. And we're going to propose to Rutsum shortly, but I want to take a small break for a second. The Gemara tells us here that when she gets Nusua, that's called Ishtini. It's not Ishtini Gufa, but it is Ishtini because her status changes from a Arusa to an Asua. Rekha Makiva Eger, 
Does her status actually change from an Arusa to a Nesua? Sure, he made Nesua, but is it not a Mechachos? He thought his woman was mother to him and that she did not commit Znus while there was a Kedushan. And he thought she was a Besula. And now he discovers that not only is she not a Besula, she's offered to him because she was Mizana Tafta. So is that not a Mecca of Tos? And therefore, why do you say in the case of Moichi Shemra, there was a status change? There was no status change. When he's accusing her, she's not even a Sua because his Nesuan was all based on the premise that didn't happen. So it's a Mecca of Tos. That's your Biki Baker's Kasha. And from this Kasha, it's a major Kedushim he builds out of here. And he says that there's no din Mecca Tos when it comes to the Sun. Why? And I, I don't have all the details, but I'm going to share with you the basics that I understood. Because the Allah is, Dr. Biki Vegar, what is a Mecca Tos? What a Mecca Tos is, it's an implied Tanai. And where Tanai wouldn't work, there wouldn't be any such thing as Mecca Tos. So let's think about it. Why is it an implied tonight? Because the idea is, it's as if he said, I'm being making the suin upon you, al manas, that you're mutter to me, and al manas, that you're basula. And that's how the myth of toys would work. But the problem is, there is no din tonight by the suin. Why? Zotra Bikivegar, again, he brings rice from Gomorrah that I don't have, I don't know, but he says, that Tanai only works on something that you can do with a shliach. You could send the shliach to be Mekadosh and Isha for you, but you cannot appoint a shliach to make Nisun for you. And since you cannot make a shliach to make Nisun for you, you can't make a Tanai by your Nisun. And if you can't make a Tanai by your, by your Nisun, it's not subject to Mekaftos. And therefore, even in the case of Pesach Pesuch Matosi, he can give her a get, he doesn't have to give her Ksuba. But we don't look at it like she's not in the suit. Now, there's another swara that's offered up, a cute swara that's offered up why it's not a Mecca Tois. Now, he might say it's a Mecca Tois because I never wanted this ruler. So, one of the swaras that are offered is why, if a guy is Mekadish, a woman, and it turns out she's a Bu'ula, it's a Mecca Tois because very simple. When you're a Mekadish, a lady, automatically, you become also to all of her relatives. You can no longer marry her sister. You can no longer marry her mother. There's many women that now become also to you because you're a Mekadosh lady. If, if, if you don't like this woman because she was a bula, she's not what you bargained for, I'm not willing to accept that I'm now prohibited from marrying all those other women. I'm losing out. By in the Sua, it doesn't matter because even if you thought she was a Basula and you made the Sua, it doesn't matter because you were already also to all of her previous because you made Kedushin. So therefore, it's not a Mecca Tosh because it doesn't really make such a difference to you. It's a big deal. So you divorce her, it's not causing you any great problems because it's the Nesuin didn't put any extra itcher on you that you could have otherwise avoided. So those are the different stories that are brought down to answer this question. So let's take stock of where we're holding. Where we're holding now is Sheila said that you don't look at the time she committed the offense where she was a Naira, which would get her skila, rather you look at the time where she was convicted, at that point she was a bigress and she only gets hurt. And that's contradictory because we have a bride that says, by a case of Moichi Shemra, if the woman committed the Avera when she was an Arusa, which was Mechai or skila, even though she only convicted once she becomes a bigress, she still gets skila. So that's a direct theory to Sheila. So Ella, Omer, Abnachman, by Yitzvah, Maybe the inner machloikus. I'll be able to argue that there's actually a machloikus tanoim about it. And our Brisa will hold like the Tana, the Brisa of Shiloh will hold like the Tana, who holds that Ishti Nigufa makes a difference. So you might ask, I don't understand. This is Shiloh's Brisa in a Brisa. So if one Brisa says A and one Brisa says B, you have a machloikus. Why did the Gemara now think, okay, I'll bring you another Brisa to prove that Ishti Nivalai Ishti is a machloikus tanoim? And that's where Toysha says is that the brides of Shiloh is not on equal ground with these brides that we're bringing. Because these brides that we're bringing were all reviewed by the Veyar Pchir and Abelishia, and they're rock solid. Shiloh's brides is suspect because 
it's not reviewed by Rav Kina Moshe. So therefore, in order to be able to say that this Brisa holds like a different Tana, we actually have to find a different Tana in a Brisa that we could trust. So Zok Gemara Tanoi, it's not. Now we know the Allah is a regular Shmojo, like you and me, if Rahman al Islam, we are Machal Shabbos Bishagi, we have to bring a carbon khatas. What is our carbon khatas? It's a female sheep. What if a Kain Gogol is Machal Shabbos Bishagi? He can't get away with a female sheep. He's got to bring a bull. What if the king or the Nazi is Machal Shabbos Bishagi? He has to bring a male goat. So there's a different carbon khatas for these two special people versus your everyday Joe. So what happens if Chotu actually this man? A coin did an Avera Bishoygik, he was Machal Shabbos Bishoygik, which would have been Machayevim, a female carbon Chatos, and then with this man, then he became Kohen Gadol before he brought his carbon. So the question is, what type of carbon does he bring? Or a regular Joe was Machoyev a carbon Chatos, and then he became a Nazi, Yimim Melach. What type of carbon does he bring? Zok the first Tana, Harayen Kejoytes. You treat him like a Joytes. In other words, their Chiyav was triggered when they were Hejoytes. Even though they were promoted, they still bring the carbon that they became a Chiyav when they were Hejoytes. They bring the regular Chatas. That, that whole that Nishtana Gufa doesn't make a difference. But Rabbi Shimon Aymer, and that he's the Tana that we're looking for, Im Noidolahem Achalayi now, the Chiv Chattis doesn't get triggered the moment you do the Aveira. The Chiv Chattis gets triggered when you realize, uh-oh, I did an Aveira. So if that Chiv got triggered before they became appointed as either a Kain Gadol or appointed as a Nasi, then Chayavim, then they have to bring the regular carbon that a, a regular person brings. Mishin is Manu Petuah. But if they didn't realize that they did something wrong and their Chiv only came once they already became the Kohen Gadol, they already became the Melech, their potter completely. They don't bring the carbon of a king. They don't bring any carbon at all. But you see here that Nishtan HaGuf, you see that there was a change here. And nevertheless, even though there was a change, they they change, their carbon changed. So this would support the Brisa that we said from Sheila, that she was Mazana when she was a Naira. She became a Bagris. Her status changes. She brings, she has a different Misa, she has a Misa of Chenek rather than Misa of Skiba. So that is the Raya that we want to bring, that you actually have a Tana who holds that a change in status, in fact, does impact the carbon that she brings. So Dr. Gemara, that is not going to solve our problem. We still have a problem. Turning over to Ahmed Beis, Eimer, the Shemin, the Reb Shemin, does what Agbos or Yadir. All Reb Shemin is saying is, that you look at both. You look at when they became the Chuyv and the Karbin and when they did the Avera, and they have to be both in the same zone. And if they're both in the same zone, then you'll bring a Karbin. But if they're not in the same zone, you don't bring any Karbin. You don't look at the zone they're in when they're bringing the Karbin. You look at both. And unless both zones are, are in the same zone, then there's no Karbin at all. So, Emir Dishmin Lai Rab Shimin, the Ozzel Afbos or Yudia. But the Ozzel Bos or Yudia, he doesn't hold on Shiva. Shiva says you look only at the time of the conviction, and therefore you get Chenek, and you ignore the time of the Avera. Rabbi Shimon is saying you look at both, and if they don't coincide, there's no punishment at all. Because in Cain, lies the carbon the Hashta. If in fact Rabbi Shimon is going to support our Brisa from Shiva and say that you look at the situation she's in when she's bringing the carbon. Well, then the Meshua should bring a par, and the Venazi should bring a Seir. So, therefore, we do not have support for Sheila's Brisa. So, once again, we're stuck. We have a Brisa that says that if the Aver happened when she was an Arusa, which was Mechai or Skilo, and it's discovered when she's a Boigris, she's Chai Skilo. Unlike the Brisa of Sheila that says she will be Chai of Chenek. And this is a problem. So, the Gemara has to back out. Change the price of Sheila. Don't say that if she's convicted when she's a Bagris, she gets Chenek. Rather, say she gets Skila. So basically, we have to back out of Sheila's Brisa and change it and edit it because it wasn't correct. 
Okay. Ve'amai. Why would you give her skila? Na'ir hamurasa omur achmonu. Ve'obayrisi. Lamai said, why taka do you give her skila? The Torah says that the Naira Hamurasa gets Skila. She's not a Naira Hamurasa anymore. She's now a Boigris. So why could you give her Skila? Omar Biloy Omar Kra, Ha Naira. It says you give Skila to Ha Naira. It says by to you as Ha Naira. So that extra hey in front of the Naira tells us that Ha Naira to Hoysukvar. It means by to Ha Naira. We take with the Naira, not a Naira. The Naira, the girl who was a Naira, when he committed this terrible Avera, we take her now, no matter what condition she is in now, even if she's a Bikers, and we give her a skill. So that's why we can justify that. So let's go back to the Bryce on Omer Aleph that we originally attacked the Veyra of Shila from. And the Bryce on Omer Aleph said that we have a hybrid situation. He was Mazana when she was on the Russo. Then she became a Nasua. Then she became a Boigris. And then her husband accused her of being Mazana back when she was still on the Russo. And the bride had told us that if she is convicted, she gets Skila. Why? Because we're treating her, we're telling you that she falls into the specific circumstances of the Moji Shermer case, where it says there, that if she's convicted, she gets skila. But what about the other side of the coin? The same Moiti Shemra case tells us that if she turns out being innocent and he was just defaming her, he has to pay Knas and he has to get Malpus. But the Bryce didn't say that. The Bryce said that she doesn't get Malp, that he doesn't get Malpus to husband. The Bryce says that he doesn't have to pay the Knas. So Omalir of Kananilir Beloi. If when she's wrong, she gets skila, and we treat her like the Naira Hamurasa, well, then when she's right, let's treat her the same way. Let's give her the same way we give her the downside of being a Naira Hamurasa when she gets skila. Well, let her have the beneficial side of it as well, that she should be entitled to the Knas, and he should get Malchus, the husband should get Malchus for defaming her. So Rabbi Loy was so frustrated by the actor that he couldn't even express the pshat. And what he said was, Rachmanan v'shom in ha'idaita. Rachmanan v'shom in Save us from your mind. And Rashi tells us why, why was he so frustrated? Because he said, this is something that clearly requires an understanding. And if you can ask Akasha, then you're missing the boat and I can't even begin to explain it to you. So what did Rabbi Hanani answer back? He gave it right back. Adi Rabbi, Rachmanan v'shom in ha'idaita dach. You don't know what you're talking about. So we had this conversation over here, shooting back, passionate comments, but Lamaith, what's that? It's a steer. Why is it that if she's guilty, she gets the Misa of Anaira Murasa, and if he's guilty, he's got free? Dr. Gemara of a time of my, what is talking the reasoning? Amr, Bitsukbar Avon, Vitamir, Bitsukbar Avon, very, very simple. Zumai Sa Garmula. Why is she getting Skila? Because of her Avera. And the person who is Moiti Shemer, the husband, his opening of his mouth, his expression, his articulation of the accusation, that causes him the nuts. So let's analyze them. Zoom might say, Garmila, Kishidanoi, Naira Danoi. What might have brought upon her the Misa? Her Znos. When she committed the crime of Znos, she was a Naira. So therefore, she's punished. Based on the time when she did the crime, which is Kilo. But Vizer, Akima Svas of Gormula, what is causing his affair? What triggers his affair when he accused her, when he was Moiti Shemra? When did he do that? Amos Kamachayev, Aishaita, at the time where he made his accusation. Aishaita Baigris Avoi. He only accused her when she was already a Baigris. And at the time that she's a Baigris, she's no longer under the rules of the specific case of Moitzi Shemra, and therefore he would not get Malchus, nor would he have to pay the class. Period. Tanu Rabbanu. Naira Hamu Rasa Shezinsa. And Naira Hamu Rasa, that was Mazana, Soikli Naitza, he gets Skila. Where did she get Skila? The Torah tells us, Al Pesach Beis Right in front of her father's house, like you learned earlier, to show this house is what raised this child. 
What if ain't law pesach beisah? What if her father doesn't have a house? Then soiklin oita al pesach shar ear. You can do the skila by the pesach shar ear, because like we learned earlier, it's not ma'akim. She still gets skila. Al pesach shar ear ahi. Uve ear sheruba oivdekecha. What if most of the city were goyim? Then soiklin oita al pesach beis. Then they do the skila in front of Vestin. The same halacha that we're telling you about Nayar Hamurasa also applies to someone who does avoid the Zohar, who's also Chayim Skila. You give him his Skila where he did his Avera. And if it's a city that's mostly Goyim, I'll pass off Vestin in front of the Vestin. And we have to learn now a chilling toitzvus. Dark toitzvus al pesach bez. Dark toitzvus lab dak al pesach bez. It doesn't literally mean that you kill somebody right in front of the bez. El chutzpah bez. It means like a little bit outside, maybe a block away. Why? Can imagine you have a big sign, Supreme Court of Bayisro, and there's people hanging over there in front of the in front of the gate. It doesn't look right. It doesn't smell right. It's like Iran, where every crane has a body hanging off of it. That's just not a good look for Bezdin. So it would be a little bit off to the side. Avokatulari. The Ri has a gewalt of a clash. He won the Mistama Bezdin, Lav Chutzlosholos Makhlos Yas. Where would the Supreme Court be? It wouldn't be out in the sticks. It's going to be in downtown. So therefore, Hezika Amar Haka. How could you possibly do skila in front of Bezdin, which is in the middle of the city? We know that the skila has to be out of the city. The Allah is any parm that has to be burnt in the base of Mikdash, like the Paraduma, they're all burnt out of the machina, way out. And we learn that anyone who gets skila gets skila in that same area, way out of the machina. So how is it possible that it's in front of Bezdin and Chutzpah Tzolosh Machnoiz at the same time if Bezdin is never Chutzpah Tzolosh Machnoiz? The Tira Tzri, the Halcha Be'ir Sheruba Oivdi Kechavim, Batla Kedushas Hekev Chayma. If you have a city even in Eretz Yisrael, which you would say has Kedushas in Eretz Yisrael, if there's no Yidin there, if it's Rav Goyim, the Kedusha is eliminated from even a city in Eretz Yisrael. And therefore, if it's a ear Sheruba Nachrim, she they don't have to do the skill outside because inside is outside because it lost its kedushas eretz Yisrael, not mamish, but it lost its kedusha. The chayma demand the lesser. It's as if there's no wall. The hayores on the kavitz chayma mishdachim into ramim. Normally, if you have a, a, a wall city, if there's a mitzayir in the city, they must leave the city. But if Roy the city is going, even a walled city, so this this should send a chill down our spine because by us not being not living in Eretz Yisrael, it diminishes the kedusha of Eretz Yisrael. Eretz Yisrael is not just kadosh for by itself; it's kedusha. It comes from Kal Yisrael, and without us being there, I sound like a tzayoni. But without us being there, without us being there, it lacks its kedusha. So I sound like a tzayoni. But Shmia Lerman said over a fascinating story this afternoon. And the story that I said over was the Sat Rebbe of Yoyal Teilbaum, the biggest, the world's biggest Siyani, was once in Tel Shiva, and he was asked to say a shir on the second Tubis because that's what the Yeshiva was learning. So as an aside, before I get into the story, the Sat Rebbe once said a shir in Lakewood Yeshiva. And after he said the shir and he was learning with some of the Bakram, and he got a little acquainted with the yeshiva, he says, doing their liquid with the Latvakis. The first Zach was so gelent, as the Latvakis then in it, as well as the Gres, as well as the Gres, as well as the Gres, the Litvaks aren't as big Skutsum as I thought. They're pretty ehrlich. In the Zweite Zach was so gelent, is they can't in it, as they get learned with the Yichagamai. And the second thing I learned speaking to the Lakewood Brochim is they're not as big Talmud Echachamim as I thought. So that's what the Talmud Rebbe said. So getting back to Tells, there was a Bachar there 
who had learned the whole Masechus Ksubis and he knew it very well. And we know Ksubis is called Chas Cotton. So the Rosh Hashiva there, I believe it was a prime word of the cats, took this bocher and introduced him to the Satma Rebbe and told him, Rebbe, I want you to know this bocher knows the whole Masechus, Gemara, Rashi, touch. you can fire him on anything. So the Satma Rebbe asked the bocher the following question. Where in Masechus Ksubis do you find that even a walled city in Eretz Yisrael will lose its Kedusha? And under what circumstances? So the Bachar, without skipping a beat, he tackled into the Masechus Well, He said it's a Toivis, on the Mem Hei Amad Aleph, I'm sorry, Mem Hei Amad Beis, Al Pesach Bezdin, and it says there that if there's no Yidin in the Ir Mekav Eshoima, it loses its Kedusha. So the Sant Rebbe, Clearly, this was a, an important choice switch for him. So you see, he cared about Eretz Yisrael. So the Sam Rebbe asked him, what is the Makar of this choice Where does choice know this from? And the Bokhar didn't know. The Bokhar did not know. And, um, and what happened was, is there were some other Rosh Hashivas there, of Kanaf, they didn't know. So what happened was, is after, after they um, finished with the Bukhar, so the Rashivas were walking to Satmar Rebbe out, I guess, to the car, wherever he was going, and they asked him, so Taka, what is the Makar? So he said, it's a, it's, it's a Gemara, it's a Yushalmi. I forgot where the Yushalmi is, but he said over there, Yushalmi. And then he said, and look up in the Gra, in the Gleish Gra, on Shulchan Aruch, this and the Sim and this and the Sif. I don't, I don't know which one it is. And they looked it up, and the Vilna Goyen says that the, he touches the Gemara Yush, Yushalmi exactly like the Sizes, and says that's the Makar of the So they were blown away how this was the highlight of Masechel Tubas that is happening forever about Chibot Eretz Yisrael, but how important it is for Klai Yisrael to be in Eretz Yisrael. Okay. So if you want to know why we're all not in Eretz Yisrael, we'll have to say what Ben Shapiro said. Because right now we have a mission here in Chutzlar. Okay. How do we know, in fact, that when someone is Ayyad of Adizora, the place to kill him is where he did the Aveir? The Tonu Rabbanu, Shi'arecha. It says in the Pasuk, I have the Pasuk over here, it says, Vaitseisa is a Ishahu, a Ishahi. I should also say, this person who did it by desire, where should you take him? El Shi'orecha. Take him to Shi'orecha. That's where you're supposed to kill him. Zoknimor Shi'orecha, Ze Shar Shavid Boy. Who said, Atoim or Shar Shavid Boy? Oi, Eno Ela Shar Shanidan Boy. Maybe this is the Star of Bezdin where they judged him. And Rashi says, even if it's in a different city, maybe wherever the judgment is, that's where they kill him. Dr. Gemar, Nemar Sharecha Lamata. It says Sharecha Lamata, which is the puzzle we just quoted that says where he's punished. But Nemar Sharecha Lamata, the earlier puzzle that describes his Avera, also uses the word Sharecha. Because it says in the puzzle, If you find someone in your Sharecha who's doing the Vodazar. So here, the Sharecha is for sure referring to where he did Avera, because that's exactly what the case is. So Zog to Gemara, Ma Sharecha Omer Lamaila, Shar Shabbat Boy, just like the Sharecha in the first person is obviously speaking about the Shar where the Avera was done. Av Sharecha Omer Lamata, Shar Shabbat Boy. So that is the Makar that the, the Skila occurs where he did Avera. Dover Acher is not arguing with what we said until now. Dover Acher is just saying another separate Limud that we can extract from the same person. That has no impact on what we're discussing. Sharecha beloi shari oivikicha. You you do the misa by by your neighborhood, not by the group. Greg the Gemara, how could you learn two things out of the word sharecha? Hi sharecha, parvikte. Did we not use it already to tell you where it is that you do the misa where the affair was done, not where the psak was? Zok the Gemara, true. But in Cain, the lame across Shar. It could have said Shar. It didn't have to say Shar Recha. My Shar Recha, Shmami Natar. So we can actually extract two bits of information from Shar Recha. A is that the Misa 
is given, the skiller is done where the Aveyor was done, and B is you don't do it by the Goy. Zor to Gemara Vaitre. Ashkan Avoyiz Kachov. So now we have Psukim that clearly tell us where the skila occurs when it's done for a Goy. But Naira Hamurasa Minola. How do we know that the Naira Hamurasa gets her skila by the Shara Bez? How do we know that? So let's see Rashi. Let's see Rashi. Um, you know, we'll see Rashi in a minute. Zog to Gemara, I'll tell you how we know Nair Maros. Amar Abavo, we have a, a three-way, a three-step Gzereshah. Gomar Pesach mi Pesach, u Pesach mi Shar, Vishar mi Sharech. So before we learn Rashi, I'll just fill you in. Pesach is the Pesach that it says by Nair Amaros. Sharech is the Sharech that it says by Avay Dezorah. Now we just have to map out this route, how we get from the Pesach of Naya Murasa to the Sharech of Avadizar. So Rashi will take us on this journey. And the first thing Rashi tells us is, this isn't really a bona fide Gzer Shava. Asmachta de Rabban Baal. This is just an Asmachta. Siv Hacha, it says regarding the Naya Murasa, Al Pesach Beis you. Where does the Misa happen? It happens in front of her father's house. So it uses the word Pesach. The Chosiv Uchsiv in Mishkan, and the Torah says when it's discussing the Mishkan, Mosach Pesach Shar Chosiv. So you find the Torah uses the word Shar together with the word Pesach. So we're going to import the word Shar and we're going to create a virtual word Shar by the parish of Naim Rosa where it says Al Pesach Beisavia. Ma Pesach Omer be Mishkan Shar Imoy. Just like there's a word Shar. Near the word Pesach, when the Torah talks about the Mishkan, will make believe that Av Pesach Amar Khan Shar Imoy will make believe that there's a virtual word Shar in the same Pesach of El Pesach Beisavia. We're importing a virtual word that's not there. Now, once we have the word Shar, even though it's a virtual word, but we have it by the Pasha of Moitzi Shemer of Naimurasa. Now, now you could compare the shar, the virtual shar that we have to the word sharecha that it says by So it's a little bit of a, a, an imaginative uh, track to learn with an ismachta that she gets killed where she did a very by Pesach Pesach. Someone does Moiti Shemra. So he has two punishments. Loike gets Malchus, the Noitzin Meyasel. And he pays the Knas. Rabbi Yehuda Aimer, Lilkais, Loike Mikom Malkin. You always get Malchus, no matter what the circumstances are, if you defame your wife. But Meyasela, the Meyasela, Bo Noitzin, Loi Bo Eide Noitzin. Only if there was a beer. If he made Nisuin, but before he had a chance to do the bia. So the wedding's over, he's going to the hotel, and two witnesses come up and say, Yanko, we need to have a talk with you before you go to the hotel. I think you got a problem. So if it occurred, this whole blow up happened before there was ever a bia, then it would not follow the rules of Naira Amurasa and Moiti Shemra. So let's think a second. In the parish of Moiti Shemra, it says that the Ovayala. I married this woman and I came to her. So if you read the words of the Torah in its most positive form, it clearly indicates that they actually had a bia. And there's actually a that the Gemara is going to introduce us to about whether the parish of, of Moitzi Shemra applies only if there was already a bia or even before there was a bia. So, therefore, let's see what the Gemara says again. The Tanakhama says, like a Venoisin Meyasela, Bain Bal, Bain Shaloibo. I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead. Um, I'm share my like of a nice Sela, regardless, and because the this sheet that Gamora is going to tell us in a minute holds that the parasha of Moitya Shema applies whether or not there was a bia, and we don't take every word in the parasha so literally. Have you done here? Little clutch like him will come up. Even if the parasha of Moitya Shema doesn't apply here, he'll get Malchus anyway. You know why, Dr. Rachi? Because he spoke about Nara. It says, like, say, like, Rachel Mecha. So independent of the entire parish of Moiti Shemra, Malkus he gets because of the general Avera of Lashon Hara. 
But Meyatzela, which is only subject to pay if he fits in to the specific category, and the specific details of the Parish of Moshe Shema, Bo'al Noisin, Lo'i Bo'al Eni Noisin. Zok Tengumar Kamivati, what is the Machlekes about? Bipluk to Derbe Lezim and Yaakov Rebona. The Machlekes is, is whether or not you have to follow the details of the Torah in the Parish of Moshe Shema, specifically whether or not it applies if there is no Bia. According to Derbe Lezim and Yaakov, the Halachis of Moshe Shema only apply if there was a Bia. And according to the Rabbonon, it applies even if there's not a bia. And therefore, the Hakik Ramar, the Moiti Shemra, Loike, Bin Nois and Meyasela, Bain Bal, Bain Shaloi Bal, the Rabbonon. If you hold that the parish of Moiti Shemra applies whether or not there was a bia, so then all of the Allahis of Moiti Shemra apply even if there was no bia, Knas, as well as Malchus. But Rabbi Huda Imer, Lil Kais Loike Mikamok. The Malchus has nothing to do with the parish of Moiti Shemra, so no matter whether it was a bia or not, there's going to be Malchus. But Mea Sela, which is only part of the specific circumstances of Moiti Shemra, only applies when you have those specific circumstances. Boal Noisin, Loi Boal in Noisin. And who does that like? Rebbe Lezben Yaakov, who holds that you don't apply the rules of Moiti Shemra unless there's a Bia. Ikadami, there's a Bia. Mea Sela is a Knaus. Correct. So, uh, this, so if there wasn't any beer, there's no knas. No, no. The, the meyasela is a knas for him accusing her of being mezana before the nesuit. Our question is, what if he never made beer on his wife? Right? He made nesuit. Let's say he never had beer with his wife. And he accused her of being mezana while she was in Arusa before he even had beer with her. That's the question. So for sure the accusation is she had to have had beer. You didn't have beer, there's nothing to talk about. The Bia Asura. But the question is, is when the husband accused her, had he already made Bia on her yet or not? And according to Blessed Yaakov, this whole parchment does not apply if he did not have Bia yet. Well, since we're relying really on Aiden, we're not just relying on his testimony that he says she's a Baula. He's bringing Correct. Aiden. Correct. So it's irrelevant whether he had, in a sense, Bia with her or not. It's very relevant because the it Torah... Was- Said that even if he brings Adam and they're false Adam, he only pays a knas under a very specific set of circumstances, right? She has to be a Naira, right? There's a right. lot of rules here. She has right. to be a Basula, and then he had to have had Bia with her after the Nisud, according to Blazman Yaakov. So he had to have had Bia, and there has to be Adam, obviously. Yes, of course. He yeah. needs both. So just to, to get back when you said it's because of Lush and Hara. That we have to give that malchus. Why don't we apply that to mumminess too? If somebody says you owe me a hundred dollars and he turns out to be false, is that in a sense not being moitzi shemra or lashon hara or being over loy uh, rachil? I'm not understanding what you're driving at. You're saying he should pay the knas? He, he should pay something. He should get malchus. You said the reason why he gets malchus is because of the avera of leiselech rachil. He guy stood yeah. up in shul and said yankel is a ganiv. Yankel yeah. is a ganiv. Yeah. It's so why? Yeah, and didn't he get, now it's false, shouldn't he be get Malchus too? He doesn't. He, get, he does get Malchus, what do you mean? When does he get Malchus? When he says Yankel is a Ghana? If he, yeah, if, yeah, sure. If, he's, if he says, if he says Lush and Hara and Tamari or Munch of Shamra, he gets Malchus, yeah. Oh, he does get, okay. So yeah. I, I didn't know, Chafetz Chaim Heritage Foundation dishes it out. I didn't realize well, it's a lab shame by Maisa. Well, well, before, be, you're right, that's a very good kasha. So we're going to get into that sugya soon, but I'm happy you brought it up because Raji directly addresses your question. So if we go into Raji here at the site for Blessed and Yaakov, let's read Raji. The Amr the Kanon, tomorrow he's going to tell us, Loi Nemer Parashas Moitzi Shemra, Elakishabah. All the rules in this parish of Moitzi Shemra only applies if he was boiler. Hilgach, Meya Sela, Loi Mechavina Lei. We don't make him pay the Meya Sela. Unless he was boiler before he made this accusation. Abu Malkus he will get the Mishumasaras by Sela Haracha Lulaki. Bafi Loibal, the Hahala Haracha, he said like Nara. Correct Rashi, Akibas Kashta. The Emishum Dava Lav Shain by Maisa. I to Lav Shain by Maisa, you just spoke. Who said you get Malkus for that? Dr. Gemara, you do that I made the Omer Lav Shain by Maisa, Loki the Law. Mesakas Makas of Mishkin Skulun. 
Rabbi Yudah holds you do get Malchus even for a deeper, even for a Lavkin and Maisha, you get Malchus. So that's an excellent question. Okay, so let's see the Gemara Vaita. Ikodamri, we might have another way of explaining the Machlaikis from Yudah and the Rabbanon, but it's still very similar. Kula Krabalaz Manyakin. Let's say that even the Rabbanon agreed to Rabbalaz Manyakin. But what they said was a little different. This is how you read the kids. The Tanakhama said, we hold like Rebbe Lezben Yaakov, and therefore you only both have to pay as well as well as get Malchus, only if there was a bill, because then it falls into the category of Moitzi Shemra. That's a very funny way of saying it. That if, 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 he, if he was royal, he's got to pay both. He's got to do both. Why it is a funny it? way of saying it. Oh. That, that's why it's the Ikadamri. I agree. Rabbi Hudaimer, Lulakois, Loike Mikamokim. Even if he wasn't boiled, he'll still get Malchus. It's Frank the Gemara, the Sover of Yuda, Lulkos, Loike Mikamokim. This we will say for tomorrow. We'll stop here. We'll be done tomorrow. So, Bor Hashem, we, we're right on the daf. And um, tomorrow, Mitch Hashem, the nine o'clock shear, I'm going to give upstairs and not downstairs because the Neil Finkel shear is joining us. So I'll, I don't know if they'll be able to come downstairs. Um, so we'll probably give it upstairs. And also the nine o'clock shear will be on 7613 rather than on um, 1948. And when we usually say it, it'll be on 7613. And depending on who's there, if, uh, Rivera, are you going to come tomorrow? I'll be, uh, yeah. So if you'll be there, we'll say this year upstairs. Okay. So we'll say this upstairs at 9 o'clock on 7613. Okay. Deal. Okay. I get the. I'll see if I'm, I'm there at 9 o'clock. I'll set up the uh, bigger screen for you. Okay. Go ahead. Um, yeah. All we have to do is just, it's fire. It's the same thing. It's the fire one. Okay. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. Go ahead. Okay.